Are we close to seeing uh, Mr. Kim here at the White House? Uh, could happen. I mean, they talked about yeah, that yesterday. I would, with I would the yeah, I think it's something that could happen. Yeah. Hey, he's the head of a country, and I mean, he is the strong head. Mm -hmm. Don't let anyone think anything different. Right. He speaks, and his people sit up at attention. I want my people to do right. the same. Well, that's Trump. I mean, that's the real fat Donnie who wants to be your king. I want to be a dictator. Yeah, and that too. Caught on an open mic, he doesn't really care if you see and hear it. Why? Because every time normal people see Trump exposed, we say, well, certainly that's going to change people's minds. From assaulting women, moved in her like a bitch, to the attack on our democracy, we say, well, now everybody knows what the f*** is going on. When will it end? But that's the wrong question. Because what we see is weakness, MAGA sees as strength. Uh. What you thought was horrible in 2015 has escalated to this point. We are one election away from the collapse of our way of life. Oh, you think I'm being dramatic? Well, keep watching. How about a couple of more indictments, Joe, you dumb son of a... A dumb son of a... But Joe isn't a dumb son of a bitch. Biden calls out Trump and has more courage than any of these lightweights. And that's an important distinction. Trump is insane and no one on the right will stand up to him. Why? Well, this weekend, the one Republican who did stand up to him now faces this. Says he wants Liz Cheney to be prosecuted. In a Truth Social post on Sunday, the former president took aim at Cheney, saying she and other January 6th committee members should be prosecuted over allegations that they purposefully withheld testimony and details from their investigation into the former president's actions during the January 6th Capitol insurrection. Cheney responded to Trump on her ex account saying that all of the accusations against her and other committee members are lies and that the former president is quote afraid of the truth. Fox News Howard Kurtz asked Trump a question and before I play it let me interpret what Kurtz was afraid to say. How <coughs> crazy are you or are you a deliberate sociopath? Why do you use words like vermin and poisoning of the blood? The press as you know immediately reacts to that by saying, well, that's the kind of language that Hitler and Mussolini used. Well, that's what they say. I didn't know that, but that's what they say. Uh, because our, our country is being poisoned. Look, we have, and we can be nice about it. We can talk about, oh, I want to be politically correct. But we have people coming in from prisons and jails, long-term murderers, people with sentences that the rest of their lives they're going to spend in some jail in some country that many people have never even heard of. They're all being released into our country. These are murderers. These are people at the highest level of crime. And then you have mental institutions and insane asylums. I always say the difference is one is silence of the lamb. You know, see, it's a mental institution on steroids, okay? And those mental institutions and insane asylums are being emptied out into the United States. And then you have terrorists supporting in at levels that we have never seen before. This is a horrible thing. Only bad is going to come of it. A friend of yours, Sean Hannity, said, it's 100% certain that there'll be big problems here very soon. He means an attack. I know there's a lot of concern about that. And he does that. say that, and I say, you happen to be right. Over the last two months, Trump has claimed that the leaders of Mexico and unnamed South American countries are emptying their insane asylums and mental institutions to send these people to the U.S. as migrants. Under Biden, other countries are emptying out their prisons, insane asylums, and mental institutions and sending them right here to the USA, can you imagine? Prisons and mental institutions are being emptied out. I read a story not long ago where a man who takes care of a large segment of people in a mental institution in a South American country, uh, a doctor, sounded like a great man, actually. He said he no longer has anything to do. He used to work 24-hour days. He said all of our patients have been released into the United States of America. And this is what we have. This is what we've allowed to happen. And we can't allow this to happen because we will not have a country any longer. We can't allow it to happen. So factcheck.org investigated and found out, big shocker, it was all <laughs> shit. Trump's campaign could not provide any evidence of the existence of a new story about a no longer busy doctor at a South American mental institution. And the campaign couldn't provide any evidence that South American countries are emptying mental health facilities to somehow hurt the US. It's all a lie and they don't care. Trump says it out loud and it shocks the world, well, most of the world. When Trump says something that everyone knows is a lie, some lap it up. Remember when he said he saw hundreds of Arabs dancing after 9-11? I said that I saw in parts of New Jersey, Jersey City, but parts of New Jersey, I saw people getting together 
and in fairly large numbers celebrating as the World Trade Center was coming down, killing thousands of people, thousands and thousands of people. People are still dying over what happened to the World Trade Center, and they're dying a terrible death. And I saw people, and I saw them on television, and I read about it on the internet, and I read about it. So they said, oh, we can't find anything, Mr. Trump. But what's happened is Trump's MAGA crowd knows he's lying, but they believe it anyway because they think they need to. Would you rather have four years of Donald Trump as a dictator or four years of President Biden reelected? You, you know, you don't have to like the words that come out of the man's mouth, but sometimes in life we all need a good paddling from the principal to, to set our life on the right track. This guy here is emblematic of the problem we face. Democracy is hard and is especially difficult for the weakest. And that's what Trump has tapped into. These people can't handle the social and cultural responsibilities of living in a democratic republic. So they latch on to the glibest speaking fascist they can find. And then this happens. I will direct the DOJ to investigate every radical DA and attorney general in America for their illegal race in reverse based enforcement of the law. I will then appoint a team of warrior U.S. attorneys, and I know, I know some great ones, including from this area, who will be the polar opposite of the Soros district attorneys. These guys, I mean, what they're thinking. Who can believe? I mean, they're not stupid people. They're not stupid people. There's two things. They're either stupid or they hate our country. And I don't think they're stupid. Trump will arrest his enemies and suspend the first, fourth, fifth, and 14th amendments, just for starters. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the horribly and unfairly treated January 6th hostages. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Now this really pisses me off. My dad was a Capitol Hill policeman. January the 6th was a defining moment for Republicans. They could have convicted Trump after his impeachment for sending his followers into the Capitol to stop Pence from certifying the election, but instead they rolled over. Well, thank you very much. And you see the spirit from the hostages, and that's what they are as hostages. They've been treated terribly and very unfairly, and you know that, and everybody knows that. And we're going to be working on that soon. The first day we get into office, we're going to save our country and we're going to work with the people to treat those unbelievable patriots. And they were unbelievable patriots and are. You see the spirit just cheering, they're, making, they're cheering while they're doing that. And they did that in prison. And it's a disgrace, in my opinion. The hostages Trump refers to broke into the Capitol, attacked hundreds of cops with bricks, poison, even American flags, sending more than 100 to the hospital. Last week's violent attack on the Capitol was undemocratic, un-American, and criminal. The president bears responsibility for Wednesday's attack on Congress by mob rioters. And even after McConnell, McCarthy, and Fox News hosts like Ingram and Tucker Carlson called for it to stop, it didn't. And those very spineless tools today question the narrative that everyone knows is the truth. You got it, darling. I'm so proud of my girl. Ah! God, he sounds insane. But for me, my greatest concern is this absolute reluctance to say anything bad about Putin. Putin's a killer. And I don't think the reason Putin has control over Trump is because of a P tape, although there may be one. I think Putin and every other dictator in the world are his heroes. And just a few months ago, you accused him of starving his people. And then listen, here's the rub. Uh, Kim is a brutal dictator. He runs a police state. And then we fell in love. Okay. No, really. He wrote me beautiful letters. And they're great letters. We fell in love. But you know what? Now they'll make, they'll say, Donald Trump said they fell in love. How horrible. How horrible is that? Trump no longer even tries to hide who he is and what he will do. The vermin, communist, socialist who oppose him, he will arrest you. And when your day in court finally comes, you'll think, whew, everything will be okay now. We fell in love. And you'd be wrong. Who's with me? This isn't their Republican Party anymore. Am I wrong? Damn right. Yes. Tick tock. You're in a lot of trouble, Donnie. <laughs> Follow, like, and hit notifications as Really American keeps you up to date on the latest Republican cult lie in this very important year. 
For Really American, I'm Chip Franklin.